Hey, welcome to the uh, Montana Sportscast podcast. Paul Podisco, Bob Ritter out here talking Frontier Conference and uh, a lot of Frontier Conference football this time around. Bobby, uh, how are you, my man? Oh, still trying to learn how to talk, but uh, getting, I think I'm getting better. You sound almost human. That's a bonus. <laughs> well, that's, that, that is a plus, I guess. So, <laughs> so how, about, how about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready for another weekend of football. Um, it, I got a question crazy. for you. I got a right. question for you. I mean, what's it like to have your voice and not being able, not doing all these games every weekend? What's what's that? <laughs> what's that like? I mean, is it? It was, it was an oddity for Tech and Rocky to be playing at Herb Clint and not being there. Um, it it really it really didn't settle well with me. I'm not gonna lie. Well, just look at the alternative you had, though. <laughs> Hey, I, I got to call soccer. Life as we know it is good. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and I think I, I think most of the frontier schools would uh, would give about anything to have that uh, the uh, the soccer pitch I was I was at to have that as a field. Um, you know that that Fort Missoula facility is incredibly nice, uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think everybody'd be all right with having that bad boy. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that one at Bozeman that's pretty new too. I think that one's pretty nice as well. So yeah, yeah, it's but. pretty awesome. Well, let's right. let's run through it. Last week was, uh, you know, our, the, the game that that we certainly circled on the calendar and um, we're looking forward to. We knew it was going to make a big deal was Rocky and uh, Montana Tech, uh, you know, down to your place in Billings. Uh, walk us through that, Bob, and, and we'll go from there. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to go either, Paul. So uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I was kind of ill and stayed home and. Uh, Tried to get tried to get healthy, but uh, I think it was everything it was built up to be. You know, basically yeah. the first half, both teams a lot of turnovers that first half. Uh, yeah, you know, and I think both teams kind of settled down. And uh, the second half, uh, you know, and, and I think they played pretty even ball the second half. I I think either team probably could have won it. Uh, I'll probably still argue the point. I think they may be the two best teams in the Frontier Conference. And I just, I, I believe that Coach Purcell said it the other day, last week when we had him on here, it's just a matter of matchups. Tech and Rocky yeah. match up so well. Yeah. Uh, you know, they just, they, they do. You know, it's just uh, a tough, but I think that they, uh, they could very well be uh, the two best teams in the conference, but uh, record's not going to show that. But uh, it was a great game. Uh, yeah. Exciting, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you bring up by matchups, and it doesn't it feel like that's always been the case? You know, even going back, you know, through the Bob Green years, you know, you look back to, yeah. um, like I think of one of my favorite matchups always was Jay LaProuse for Montana Tech and Travis Salter for Rocky. I mean, it, that that's going back a few years, but it always feels like they're matched up extremely well. Uh, they're always feel like they know exactly what the other team's going to do. Uh, it doesn't feel like we have many blowouts. You know, it always comes down to a couple oh. big plays. And, um, yeah, that's always one to really look forward to. Yeah, maybe we should just uh, play the last four minutes of the game and skip the first part, huh? That <laughs> that's, that's, it feels like that's been the case for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah it, uh, I, I don't know. It's just uh, – it's a great matchup, you know, and it's – I. that's one team, one game that I wish that, you know – if we do expand that those two teams would each play each other twice a year, just for lack of better words for shits and giggles, because I think it's, it's so much fun to watch them go at each other, but, but no, it was a great game. And, uh, you know, it was all it uh, lived up to be. And, you know, I think tech's got the game this week too. I think tech and Western, I think that's going to be a big one. Uh, really do. We've both said all along yeah. that, uh, we think Western's going to have something to say at the outcome of this. They're not going to yeah. be at the top of the standings, but uh, they're definitely going to have a say who is going to be at the top of the standings. Well, and and like we talked about, you know, again, going back to the break, when when we had uh, that bye week for everyone two weeks ago, uh, you know, we talked about really to, to, to look at the playoffs, you know, a couple teams are going to have to, to, to win out. And, and Montana Tech, that was certainly the case. They have been in playoff mode the last two weeks. Uh, for Carroll and, and also for Rocky, that's kind of the case as well, as you're in playoff mode significantly right now. Um, and, 
you know, that you look at that Southern College of Idaho game, that was that's a big one. You know, you look how well Southern played against Tech. Tech was able to get the win there. Southern has another real good chance of knocking off College of Idaho uh, and being, you know, everyone's favorite team in the Frontier Conference. Uh, and and uh, the uh, College of Idaho does what they do. They win late. They win a great ball game over Southern. Uh, so C of I still in the driver's seat right now to get the lone playoff uh, bid. Uh, but boy, some teams really nipping at their heels and, and you know, kind of looking at as you look at it there, the, the College of Idaho sits seven and one in conference play. There are, looks like they're 12 uh, overall in their or excuse me, rather 12 overall in the country. They're, uh, you know, they're in the driver's seat right now. If they win out, um, you know, they're in they're into the uh, not only as the Frontier Conference member, but, you know, they're ranked high enough that there's an outside chance they could host. I, I can't imagine it would happen right now, but. Uh, there's still a chance on the outside. Uh, but then from there, you know, you've got Montana Tech, who is sitting 20th in the country. Carroll College sitting 23rd in the country. Um, it really feels like right now, Bob, that we are a, a one-team conference going into the national tournament. Uh, you know, there I, I would assume, you know, you say College of Idaho wins out. If Montana Tech wins out or Carroll College wins out, you know, that those coaches are probably sleeping on the couch in their office waiting for that call from the NAIA to say, hey, guess what? You're you're going to play Morningside, um, you know, something like that. But right now, it really feels like we're looking at as a one team conference going to that national tournament. Yeah. And like uh, we talked earlier today, Paul, I, I think the only way we would get two teams in is if College of Idaho would stay in that top 12, say, and another team would win the frontier conference title we may get to that way but that would be a slim chance i think yeah and i i think even there you know you have college of idaho with two games left if they lose one of those uh they're going to tumble out of that 12 um you know yeah. they, they might land in the the high teens maybe around 20 uh and then that would put all you know a big old log jam of frontier schools there you know in that 20 maybe high teens and uh as we know if, if you win the frontier conference crown if, if we have a log jam, say we have a bunch of teams, say we finish with three teams at six and two, um, or, or maybe even five or, you know, with three losses, I should say, uh, you know, if we go seven and three or eight and two, um, if, if there is a log jam at seven and three, um, two, the, boy. the <laughs> that would be a heck of a log jam. But if it's, if it's more than two teams, basically that the one that is ranked in the top 20, um, and, and is, you know, tied would win the automatic bid for the frontier conference due to, you know, just, you have to be in the top 20 to get the automatic bid in the national tournament. So that's the first tiebreaker is if you're in the top 20 and you're tied for the frontier conference crown, then you would get the automatic bid. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and that's clear as mud. Yeah, it is. It is, you know, and it's the tiebreaker thing. Uh, it's always been interesting to me in football for the frontier conference but like you say it's totally different who gets that automatic bid that's that's decided by the naia yeah that's yeah. as far as i'm as far as i know anyway yeah the uh you know talking to wally felt um you know earlier uh, in the season uh, i asked him about tiebreakers if we came down to a multi-team tiebreaker and he said it, it the big part there would be the highest ranked team if you're ranked in the top 20 uh, you would get the automatic bid due to the fact that to get an automatic bid, um, you have to be in the top 20. So, you know, say say for some reason we do have a three-team tie um, and, and whoever has the highest national ranking, as long as it's in the top 20, uh, would win the national bid uh, because you, again, over the last couple of years, the, the big one is you have to be in the top 20 to receive the automatic bid to go to the playoffs. So... <laughs> Who knows? It's it's going to be great. And I don't think that's going to happen. You know, you look at College of Idaho has two games remaining. Uh, they have Eastern Oregon. Then they have Carroll College. Um, you know, I, I I think Carroll could could give them a good go. But I, I don't you know, I, Eastern Oregon, I just still don't see him stepping up. Uh, I think College of Idaho uh, is, is in pretty good shape to, to get out of it. Uh, you know, you look at Tech has Western this weekend. That's going to be an extremely tough game. That's here in Butte. Uh, you know, Tech won in Dillon uh, going back to the beginning of the season, but Western's playing different football right now. Uh, and that's going to be a tough game. They do finish at Northern. Uh, Carroll, on the other hand, probably has the toughest out, in my opinion, of those three teams that are sitting with two losses or less. Uh, you know, Carroll has Southern Oregon and the College of Idaho still left. So, 
Uh, and both yeah. of those are on the road. So those are two yeah. big road trips for Carol. Um, and, and they're, they're, uh, you know, if they're looking to go eight and two on the season, that is going to be a really tough road to do it on. Well, and you look at those, those three teams, because that's basically what it comes down to, uh, you know, tech has kind of got the, the easy side of things there, uh, with Western and, and Northern where I think college of Idaho, you know, both those games going to be interesting Eastern and and uh, Carol, and the same thing with uh, Carol, a Southern and College of Idaho. I, I, I just could see, I could see Carol dropping two, and I could see College of Idaho dropping two. Really? Yeah, I do. I, 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 I think, I, I, I think uh, Carol going to Southern this weekend. Southern, we've talked. You know, they're playing awful well. Uh, Everybody talks about the hangover game. They had a great game against Rocky this last week or here a while back. And, and I, I just think that, uh, you know, Southern might get them and, and uh, a tough one at uh, college of Idaho. Yeah. I think that Carroll college of Idaho game could be real interesting. I, th- I think there's going to be a lot, a lot weighing on that one here, you know, not this weekend, but in two weeks, but like I say, college of right. Idaho or Carroll with two big road trips. Um, yeah. Those are going to be tough. You know, those are tough. Yeah. But there, and then again, yeah. I mean, Carroll's playing really good football down the wire. You know, they started slow. They, uh, you know, we, when we talked to Coach, he said some of those, uh, some of his position groups are still really young. Um, you know, and and uh, you know, the the bye week helped them a lot, and it, it feels like they're playing well. But that said, so is Western. I, Western has put together some really good games here, uh, and they have made themselves a, a, a real factor in this conference down the line. And and with Coach Norris and that group, you, you know, that was going to be the case. Yeah, we talked about that before the bye week that uh, Western yeah. would definitely have something to say uh, on the outcome of the tournament uh, or the conference standings before it was all said and done and definitely going to happen. So from there, let's let's set this up. Do you think uh, College of Idaho, Eastern this weekend, Carroll this weekend, or in two weeks for College of Idaho, uh, do they go to 8-1? and one? Do they beat Western this weekend? Or do they beat Eastern? Did I say Western? I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to split. I okay. think, uh, I, uh, I think, uh, Carol, I think Carol's going to get them to that last game because I think, uh, like you said, that's going to be a game with a lot of meaning on it, especially for Carol. Uh, yeah. that would be the, their only chance to get in. I think. Okay. Um, from there, uh, tech has Western this weekend for another big one. And, uh, what the 122nd meeting between the two, I think, uh, and then Northern, they'll finish in Haver at the new facility up to uh, up to Northern. Uh, what do you have, Tech Western, this weekend, Bobby? Let's back up. What are you saying about College of Idaho? You got to get out of this without throwing something out here. I, I think I think they get them both. Um, okay. I, I I think you know to be honest, I think they get Eastern. I, I was hoping, not hoping, I guess, but I kind of expected Coach Camp and company to get to get kind of moving. Um, and, and maybe they still will, you know, they, they always seem to come out with one of those big games and, and this weekend could be the big one, but I, I think college of Idaho gets Eastern. Uh, I, I think in a, a really big game, uh, the college of Idaho Carroll game is big, but I think it will be, is that in, is that at Nelson or is that, is that in, uh, that's a, that's an Eastern. Yeah. 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 So it, that's at Eastern, uh, and then college of Idaho Carroll, um, is is Carol's on the road, right? So that would be yeah. um, that would be in Caldwell, and I think that's a big plus. You know, Senior Day for Caldwell uh, for the College of Idaho in Caldwell, I think is a big one. I, I think College of Idaho beats Carol, but I think that's a, a really ugly, hard physical football game. So I think College yeah. of Idaho personally finishes nine and one. Okay, now we can go to Tech. All right, now uh, Tech Western. What do you, what do you got there? I mean, John Jund and company uh, is is playing really good football here the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I, boy, I don't know. That's a tough one for me. I just, uh, I think it's going to have a lot to do with uh, injuries. Who's healthiest, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you, and not necessarily the start of the game, but at the end of the game. And I think it's going to be one on that uh, same old saying is going to be one on the line. Offensive, defensive lines, I think. uh, uh, I'm going to say tech. Okay. And I'll uh, I'll go ahead and and I'll say Tech over Northern too. Yeah, so I think then, I think Tech I think Tech will win out. Okay, 
So you have uh, Tech going eight and two. You also have College of Idaho going uh, eight and two, right? Yep. Okay. We'll get we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Tech Western. Uh, I don't know. This one always feels like a sibling game to me. You know, I mean, where where you know, they're Tech and Western. I feel like are are siblings in a lot of ways where they'll beat up on each other and you know we can make fun of you and you can make fun of us but if anybody else does like we're we're just gonna gang up on them and beat them to tar um but i i think this is going to be much different game than it was in dylan you know i I felt like john jund and in that offense just could not get on track at the beginning of the season and they've found some momentum and he is one of the most electric guys in this conference i think he is going to be outstanding but i'm with you i think it's won or lost in the trenches um, I don't think Tech has given up a sack in the last couple of weeks, and they've only given up just a few all season. Um, I, I think that's it. I think that's a big factor, and in in, uh, I think Tech's going to win a hard one against Western, but I think that's going to be a really good ball game uh, Saturday up to Bob Green. Um, yeah, and then I, with with you, I'm, I think Tech goes to Northern uh, and gets a big win there. Um, you know, to, to finish out the season in Haver. All right. So what are you? Right. I I, got- I think. Go ahead. I've got C of I eight and two. What do you got them? I've got them. I've got them nine and one. I, okay. I think C of I finishes nine and one. Tech at eight and two, and then I, I think Coach Sampson spends the night on the couch. You know, I, we go back to those years. Uh, you know, when when Van Deest and company were dominating at Carroll when they were always in, and then you know you had Bob Green and Butte, you had Mark Sampson at Northern, you had Coach Lee or any of those at Western, where where they're right on the periphery, where they're just hoping they get that call, you know, that, that late call to say, Hey, you're, you're coming into the playoffs as well. But uh, I think that's the realm that tech will finish in. I think they'll have a real strong season. Um, You know, hopefully in my opinion, if C of I wins out, we need some big losses and I just don't think they're going to happen. But um, you know, if, if tech is able to climb into the high teens uh, they have an outside chance at getting in and, and hopefully for the conference they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I, I'm not sure I think it'll happen, to be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can uh, we can always wish and cheer for the frontier, oh, right? Well, again, I mean, and that's, <laughs> I don't know, we're, we're frontier people. And obviously, you have been around Rocky forever. I have done tech games forever, but we're frontier fans. You know, if, if um, I, we all believe that if, you know, if, if we sent three teams, there, there's a real chance that all three of those teams would win in the playoffs. I think we know that the level of play is really high. Uh, and and we would give really good opportunities to to win if we got to the national tournament. But will we get to the national tournament? I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, and the thing that's always I've always felt that it was tough is it seems like we always get that number one or number two seed that yep. we end up going and playing. And uh, you know, I I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if that's not uh, right. I'll yeah. use that word for lack of better words. <laughs> that was good. That's good self how about, how about proper? Let's let's that's, use that might be better yet. But uh, and that is not a term usually used with us. No, 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 no. Right. So uh let's talk Carol. All right. So what what do you got? Carol sitting 23 in the country. Uh as we mentioned, we both felt that they have the toughest road out. They're both on the road. They're at Southern Oregon, they're out Cal- at College of Idaho. Um, you already said that you have Carol beating College of Idaho. What about yep. Southern? I got Southern winning that one. Yeah. Huh? Yep. What are, what's the reasoning? I just think that uh, I just I just my gut tells me that I guess yeah. you know I I know uh, Southern's just they're just due. I think they're they're due to knock somebody off. You know, and they've they've been so play i think they're playing better all the time and i mm-hmm. think they played pretty well and you know there's just a lot of i think there's a lot of things for southern to be playing for in this game besides jockeying in the frontier conference and probably the number one thing in my mind is recruiting mm-hmm. uh you know you got to realize where they recruit from in northern california and and up and down the oregon coast there and you know, just I just think it's a uh, a big game for them recruiting wise that they they have got to get a big win here, and I think this is going to be it. Okay, yeah, I think that's solid, and I think their skill guys are incredibly talented, and I think they've gotten better. Um, yeah, I, I, that Southern Carroll, and again, that is in Ashland, so that's that's a big yep. one. So you've got you've got Carroll winning at Southern, 
and and falling at CFI. I got Southern winning it. Oh, that's right. I, I got I, wrote I got backwards. I got Southern winning and <laughs> Carol winning at uh, College of Idaho. <laughs> Let me just tell you what you think, I got, Bob. I don't know what I got. You got me confused <laughs> now, Paul. I, you know, I, I like, I'm kind of with you. I like Southern Oregon in, in that first game for some reason. I, I think they're playing really good. Um, I, I think their skill guys are are sound. The big question mark for me is can they, uh, can they get time? You know, the the SOU, I, I think their offensive front is going to be really tested. I, I think Carroll's front seven, their, you know, their down linemen, their linebackers, have been really good all year, you know, and, and they've gotten better at a couple spots. Um, I, I think that's the big question mark. If Carroll gets pressure, uh, then then Carroll's going to be in good shape. But if Southern has time to throw the football, uh, Southern's ugly. And, and I think they're going to get time. I, I like Southern to beat Carroll uh, it, this coming weekend. Uh, but then that said, I, I've got I've got College of Idaho beating Carroll uh, after a second long road trip for the Saints. Yeah, yeah, that uh... – it's going to be a tough one for Carol. I, yeah, I do have to agree, but I, I'm still going to stick with them on that last one. <laughs> All right, let's let's go to the Batland Bears. Well, they go to Northern this weekend. Okay. And then they uh, have Western at home. Okay. Uh, Any, I'm going to uh, take I'm going to take uh, Rocky this weekend, and uh, kind of another one of those uh, like last weekend with. Uh, Western, I I just I think Rocky will get that one. Uh, they know it's their their last game of the year, probably on their home field, and I think mm -hmm. they're going to defend their turf. Okay, yeah, that Senior Day energy is a big deal, you know. And, and I love Senior Days. I mean, the Senior Days yeah. are so important for programs, and not only the the history, but also moving forward. Um, yeah, I love Senior Days, and and there there is a much different energy. Uh, for a lot of facilities in, in senior day. And, and it's a tough one to win in, in Billings. You know, and another thing I think we need to talk about is we're getting done to that weather situation. Yep. Uh, you know, that could, uh, that could come into play pretty big in, uh, in some of these games. Uh, probably, uh, probably more so with uh, Tech and Rocky going to Northern. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not so sure the weather's going to be bad at Southern or College of Idaho is what it's going to be in the Montana schools. Yeah. You know, and we're looking at, I know here in Southwest Montana, anyway, we have, you know, snow in the forecast over the next few. Um, yeah. So weather is going to be an issue, probably highs in the thirties here uh, for the next few. So that said, you know, the, the idea of going West won't impact it as much as, as certainly dealing with it here in Montana. Yeah. So what do you got for Rocky? I've got, I've got them beaten Northern. Um, and then, gosh, that, that's a, that's a fun game to end the season with Rocky and Western. I think yeah. both of those programs, there, there's a lot of leadership. There's a lot of pride. Um, there's a lot riding on that game, you know, for this season, but moving forward, I, I, that's going to be, that's going to be physical. Um, that's a really tough one there. Um, Gosh, I should, I haven't even really thought about it. That one I'm really on the fence about. I I like I I don't know I don't know what the corner was for Western, but I, I like what they're doing offensively. Like it feels like Jund has kind of gotten his groove back a little bit. Uh, but I I really like how Rocky has responded to to Nathan Dick being out. I you know he's he was probably the the most electric, if not the most electric player in the conference. When you lose a guy like that, you you remove a lot more than you know your quarterback. And they have done such a good job playing without him and showing that guess what you know we we don't need him you know we, we've got other guys to fill the void um boy that one could come down to a last possession but for some reason i'm i'm going against you bob i'm sorry i mean i've got to go western i i think <laughs> i don't know why and i just there's that sibling thing that's it that's it probably it. <laughs> that, that is exactly it yeah, I, I yeah. think I'm. I think I'm more jealous of John Jun's mullet uh, than I am of anything else. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Western, and and uh, that that could be the end of our friendship. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's gonna be a good battle. It always is. You know. Yeah. That's, that's the best thing about it is. And, yeah. Uh, you know that's that's what's so great about Frontier College football. I mean, yep. there is you know the you. You've done this. You've done the history on how many times these teams have played each other, and and I don't know what the longest 
string is. I think it might be I'm, Tech and Rocky. I'd it? say from what I'm finding, it's Tech and Rocky. Let me let me grab yeah. it here. I didn't bring it up to share, but I, I do have it in front of me. Let me. So the overall record, you know, you have to factor in that Rocky has changed names, and you know, they yeah. so they they started uh, as as Montana Wesleyan. Uh, they changed their name to Intermountain Union, and that was still when they were based in Helena. Then they merged with Billings Poly. Uh, in 1921, or excuse me, in 1939, uh, Billings Poly went from 1921 to 1939. Uh, and then uh, Billings Poly formed, uh, merged with Intermountain Union to form Rocky Mountain College in 1949. Uh, but if you account all of those together, uh, it were at 134 games overall. So um, that's a that's a pretty good run uh, for two teams to see each other. So 134, I believe, is the is the highest uh, of anybody in the Frontier Conference again between Rocky and Tech. But that's that's what makes it so good is these teams have yep. played, you know, just the the rivalries, you know, and and you know, I know Northern dropped out there for a few years. It's good to have them back, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, and I hope Coach Sowers gets things going up there, and I think he will. You know, I do he's too. got a nice nice facility up there now to to play in. And I think that. Uh, I think he'll do a good job of recruiting. It's got to be tough to recruit uh, into Haver. We all know that as as uh, we get the basketball season. I'll tell you a Steve Keller story about recruiting, but we're going to wait on that one. Yeah. But it, you know, there's some of these. It's tough to recruit in Montana. It it yeah. is. You know, yep. it's uh, it's not easy for for these uh, schools. It's not like College of Idaho uh, or Southern Oregon. You know they've they've got some definite advantage location wise in recruiting. Yeah, that they do. And and you know going back to Coach Sowers, I, I think uh, you know they, these last couple of games are real important. You know we talk about for everybody, but it really feels like they're extremely important for Coach Sowers. You know he at this point he needs buy in. You know he needs he needs a handful yeah. of guys or more to go, all right, we, we saw what we were able to do this year. Let's improve on that next year. You know, he needs those guys to stick around. He needs leadership in the locker room besides his. Um, and then in the off season, like you say, recruiting, getting bodies in and, and building that program. But, um, you know, he can only do so much. He needs, he needs a group of guys that he can lean on um, that, you know, when he brings recruits in, you know, he, you know, it's one thing to be recruited by a coach, but when you go on that campus and get tours from, uh, players and going, all right, what's the deal? You know, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. That's, that's when guys come in. That's when people believe in the program. And uh, right now that's, in my opinion, that's what he needs. He needs those guys, um, some leadership on the field right now to turn around and go, all right, this is what we did last year. Let's, let's improve on that next year. Uh, let's make st- small strides and let's build this program rights. And uh, I think the field is an incredible help in that. You know, if this was another couple of years out of yeah. the field, if they were still at Blue Pony, uh, I would be really worried uh, where Northern yeah. is. But I think the field is a, a big, big help in that. Yeah, I do too. I, I just, I hope they get things turned around, and because uh, it's, it's just so much better for the conference. And uh, yep, you know, I don't know how much tougher we want to want it to get, but it, it uh, definitely going to get tougher next year with Arizona Christian coming in. Uh, you know, and we talked off the air prior to the show we're going to try to get the uh peter dreyer the ad at arizona christian i'm going to con- reach out to him and see if we can get him on here and kind of get his thoughts we've talked to some of the other coaches paul about arizona the frontier coaches about coming in uh be interesting to get his take on on coming into the frontier conference yeah. and some of their reasoning why yeah I, I those kind of decisions i i love hearing what what makes that happen? You know, I mean, it, from everything I understand, Arizona Christian was the one who instigated uh, the conversation with the Frontier Conference. Um, so, um, you know, whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's it's rumor mill. Uh, and and whether uh, it would be interesting to, to see that side of it, you know, because we certainly know our side of it. Uh, but to hear the side of Arizona Christian and what they feel about our conference and, and about the Montana schools uh, will be really interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. Any more on football, sir? You know, where let's talk about you know, like we already talked about Southern a little bit, Eastern. What what do you see out of uh, out of Coach Camp and, and Eastern? What what's important for them now, and and what do you see moving forward out of Eastern? You know, 
I, I, that's just a surprising team to me this year. You know, yeah. I think to both of us, you know, they're so well coached and, and, uh, um, I think it's just one of those years, you know, Paul, it, it happens. It seems like to every team yep. that there's just one year that shit just goes wrong. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's maybe the year for, for them this year is that, I mean, it, we know that they're well coached. We know that they've got the the talent. It's just mm-hmm. things things haven't clicked. Maybe yep. uh, you know, I, I don't know the words, but uh, I was going to do something for this week, and I didn't get it done, Paul. But uh, maybe I'll I'll try to get it next week. I want to go through and uh, get the classmen, and because uh, I think we got a lot of young teams in the frontier yeah. this year. Agreed. You know, and uh, I I was going to do that this week and I didn't get it done, but I'm going to go, maybe I'll get that done this next week and just look at uh, how many young kids we actually have in the league this year. But, uh, yep. you know, just overall, I think we're pretty young as a league. Yeah, and I agree. I, that, I, you know, without looking at the numbers, maybe that's the thing with Eastern Oregon, you know, could be that a lot like Carol last year, they were young last year, you know, and coach yep. Purcell said it last week, you know, our, our kids, had six games last year or seven games last year, and they've got six or seven games this year. So they're, you know, they're, they're growing up. Yeah. Yep. No, I think that's going to be a, good, that, that's a great point. I think we'll see how many seniors we're graduating and we are going to lose some, uh, you know, the conference is going to lose some really talented guys at, at skill positions, yeah. uh, which is always going to be the case. But um, yeah, I think there is an awful lot of young guys getting reps at, at basically every position. Um, and, and, you know, those are names we're certainly going to hear here for the next couple of years. Yeah. And I, I, something else I'd like to, I know tech has got a ton of players on their roster and I know Rockies around, uh, I think we're right at 125, okay. um, uh, in football right now. That's another number that, uh, kind of intrigues me. I'd like to, uh, reach out and see if we could get those numbers somehow. I'm not sure where, but I'm sure we can, but uh, that'd be an interesting figure too, just to see uh, what these programs got. I know if we keep getting any worse, we're going to be double. We're going to have offensive and defensive numbers for the first 30 <laughs> numbers on a, on a team. It's... <laughs> yeah. And, and, <laughs> it's... and we're old and slow and those, you know, those double numbers are. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, they're really hard. Yeah. All right. I'm... So, what, what else what you got for football? Now? You want to you want to jump up and talk about uh, what do you want to talk about in football? I I think I think it, well, do you have anybody where where do you go player of the year? When you think of the Frontier Conference, obviously there's two games left, but right now who do, who do you have for uh, for player of the year? I really like that their quarterback down there in your sibling. Oh, with Mr. John John, do you? Yeah, I do. You know, and it depends on what they do these last two games. Yeah. But I, he's yeah. just a talent to me. I, yes. I, you know, I just, there. I've always been, I've always been impressed with him, but I, yep. I, he's, he's a good one. And, you know, and, yeah, I hate to lean towards that quarterback position as a leadership, but you brought it up with Nate Dick uh, going out, you know, talent wise, but I think Rocky misses his leadership on the field more than anything. Yeah, I can see that. You know, and I think that that's where Jung comes in at Western. I just think that he is, uh, I think he's the complete package. I, I really yep. do. I agree. Yeah, I, I, there's a whole lot of what ifs this year because again we have a lot of big injuries. You know, with, with Nate Dick out, um, you know, you look at um, you know over the years we have certainly found that very rarely are you going to get through the season with only one quarterback, uh, and, yeah. and that's the case with with several programs. So um, yeah, I think there's a whole lot of what ifs, but I don't know. I'm I'm kind of with you. No, and otherwise, we don't have we don't have that one guy blowing up a position. You know, we don't have a you know a 1500 no. yard running back. You know, we don't have. Um, you know, there, there are some incredibly good receivers and, and this might be the year that you go, maybe a receiver somehow gets that nod. Um, but you know, we don't have, uh, you know, a quarterback with, with, you know, huge numbers. We don't have a running back with huge numbers. Uh, it's, it's very kind of across the board. Uh, and, and we're seeing just kind of solid numbers 
uh, and good team numbers, it feels like, for everybody involved. Yeah, and I, you know, you talk about, let's go to, to the rushing game. I think, you know, I just pulled this stuff up, and I'll go ahead and share that uh, as well, Paul. But, um, you know, you look at the rushing counts. I mean, there's just so many. It used to be, and you kind of hit on it there, that, we used to have somebody with 150 yards, you know, way out in front of everybody yeah. else. But right yeah. now, I mean, it's it's pretty – those five there, they're pretty close. How, and how crazy is that? So you've got Blake Counts coming off a big game, ran for a buck fifty, you know, in, in your place last week. Um, and he's still under a uh, hundred yard average, just barely. But then your next two guys are College of Idaho, you know, as they, they yeah. uh, go by committee. But, yeah, it always feels like, you know, you go back to those years where we would have guys – you know, average in 150, 160, you know, I mean, how many years did you have, uh, uh, you know, like the Carroll contingent, you know, like uh, Chance Demerai and, and some of those guys. And and then you think of uh, every school has those, you know, where you're going, oh man, right. you know, they, where you're averaging 150, 160 yards a game. And that was the frontier conference identity. It felt like for decades was big, powerful running backs that were going to run for, you know, nearly 200 yards a game. And, and we're just not there this year. You know, I mean, the, the idea of the frontier without a hundred yard rusher to me just feels absolutely alien. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you've, you've mentioned the two college of Idaho kids. Uh, I'll tell you what, they're both pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, they do it great. And, and that's been their identity. I mean, they've always yeah. run the ball really well and they make no bones about it. They're going to come right at you. Yeah. Uh, and again, it goes back to their strength in the offensive front, which we talked to coach about. I mean, they have just yeah. always been incredibly good in the O front. Yes. Yep. Receiving, you know, uh, it's up there. You got, you know, Richardson at College of Idaho. Uh, the game when we played them uh, here at Rocky, I actually did call that game. And uh, I would say that Richardson was about the number three receiver on that team that day. Yeah, uh, but he's yeah. leading the conference now, you know, and then Hoffman's done a great job there uh, at Tech. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. It's, it's just uh, there's nobody that really stands out to me. No. You know, even yeah. even at the quarterback spot, we saw that uh, as well. But, you know, it's uh, and defense. Uh, let's see if we can pull some of that up there. You know, I, I kind of feel sorry because everybody leaves defense out so much. But uh uh, tackles per game. You got a couple Montana State Northern kids in there. Yeah, which is great you know, to see. I, yes. Yeah. I, I, and I'm, the Wampler kid is, is he's one that I, you know, is, is I look at Northern, he's one that I, I feel like has to carry him. And, and you hate to put that on anybody, but with how hard he has played and, and watching him play, he is a guy that you're like, all right, we need, you know, he's a Montana kid. We need you yeah. to carry the torch for Northern and to be that guy in the locker room. Um, and, and, and I can't imagine the coach isn't just leaning on him, but yeah, I think an awful lot rests on that young man. Uh, and, and like I say, his defensive numbers are there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's well, it's, it's, it's odd. It's an odd year. That's for sure. Uh, kind of as odd as this computer of mine is. <laughs> doesn't want to doesn't wanna work to work to my ways. Yep. Well, Paul, so else, let's jump. Got, let's Bobby? jump into. Let's jump into some volleyball. It's coming up. Uh, you know, there's Tech uh, definitely leading the way there. Uh, I'll see if I can bring the conference standings up here for that. Yeah, that was uh, a. You know, we we we. Uh, it, it feels like everybody kind of got sidetracked for Tech Rocky and in, in football on Saturday, but that Tech Rocky uh, volleyball matchup Saturday was a big one, uh, and that's a that's a big win for Tech to go into the Fortin Center. Uh, and, and get a win over Rocky. I mean, that, you know, I was talking to Coach Solomon about it earlier this week, and um, he says it might be the first time since like 2017, maybe, that Tech has won a conference game uh, in that building. And uh, there aren't many teams that have gotten out of the Fortin Center here in the last while with a win over the Rocky ladies. Well, and that was the first time uh, Tech had swept Rocky in their previous meetings this year. I think they played twice. I think they played in the preseason tournament and then. Yep. Uh, they played uh, that, and uh, Tech had swept them both times. But uh, you know, I I actually watched that on TV. I didn't uh, didn't go to it, but uh, uh, I think Tech was up like 11, 11 to one in that one set, and 
or Rocky was up 11 to one and tech came back and won it. Wow. You know, it's, uh, but you know, you look at the standings there, Paul, those two Montana tech and Rocky, both, uh, kind of in the driver's seat there. I did, uh, get a hold of Wally this morning. He sent me a bracket, uh, cause the tournament is coming up. I think they have, they have a couple games this weekend and then the conference tournament will start, uh, Tech and Rocky, the way it sits right now, one and two, I don't see that changing. They'll both get buys that first round. Okay. Uh, kind of depending on the tiebreaker. I don't know what it is. Uh, you're a volleyball guy. You may know, but uh, between Providence and Western there, I don't know how that yeah. would sit right now. But uh, number four would play number five. So you'd say Northern playing Providence and number three plays six. So that'd be Carroll playing, saying Western. Okay. And the winner of the Northern Providence game would play Tech that evening. That would be okay. Friday evening. And uh, the winner of the Carroll Western would play Rocky on Friday evening in the semifinals. And yep. the championship would be at 2 o'clock on Saturday. And that okay. will be at, uh, at Tech. Yep, that will be up to the hyper. So, uh, And, again, we still have matches remaining before we get to the end of the season. So there's still a lot of wheel room there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, again, talking to coach Solomon, he said that, you know, the, the tech Rocky match was a big one. And the fact that they're starting to get a little healthier, they're starting to get a couple gals back. Um, and he said that the level of play, especially in the, the last couple sets was incredibly high. Um, both teams played so well. Um, and, and that's, that was, he said that he, he really felt like it was one of those matches that you get at the national tournament where, you can just tell that, you know, lives are on the line kind of a deal where it's, it's more than just a couple points here and there where it, it, there yeah. was just nothing given, nothing gained. And it was, it was incredibly high level volleyball. Uh, but he said that it, he felt tech was really lucky to come out of there with a win. You know, and I talked to Jim Kleeman, the AD at uh, Rocky on Sunday, we had a couple of basketball games there and uh, we were talking a little bit about the volleyball match. And he said that, you know, if, if, Rocky could have pushed it to five. He felt that they could have had a chance to win it because, and looking back at this match makes sense. He says, cause Rocky starts so fast. They always start fast and fail towards the end of a set. And he said, uh, those short sets, those 15 point sets, he says, that's a big advantage for Rocky, which I didn't ever think about that, but, uh, yeah. very true. Yeah. And, and that's one, you know, like going back to the national tournament last year for, for Montana tech is, is there were kind of the other side of that where, they kind of got started late, and and that that hurt them at times. Um, yeah, I, I just think that's a big win, and I, and it's another one where the, the conference is solid. You know, Carroll uh, hosting Tech last week got a huge win last Wednesday, um, yeah. and and certainly a big emotional win for Coach Tutty and company. And and you know, again, there's a high level of volleyball being played, and um, you know that that's one of those where you cannot take any of those matches lightly. You know, we we've got a couple of weeks left before the tournament. Uh, and you had better be prepared or else you're going to, you're going to be hanging one in the wrong column. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of, I got the uh, standings or the ratings up there, the national wise. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Rocky's not uh, at least listed in that, uh, Paul. I agree. I, I agree. And I, th I think that would surprise most people in the conference. In my opinion, I, I think the idea that they're not in that receiving boats at least seems kind of an oddity, you know, because we certainly see that, name alone a lot of times will get you there uh and and their record is solid i i am very surprised that they're at least not garnering some votes and and getting a little bit of national attention anyway yeah yeah i i i won't use any words on that let's just go on to something else <laughs> we always seem to have an issue with with rankings you know it's amazing yeah how that yeah you know it's i don't know the raiders i you know the not raiders, but the raters, the people that do the rating, you know, it's got to be a tough job. But I, yes, I, I just, I kind of wonder how much it gets changed before it gets put on paper. Yeah, I give you that. You know, and, and the one I will say is it does feel like the volleyball raters, because of the amount of, of tournaments that these teams are getting to and getting out in front of other nationally ranked teams, it feels yeah. like they're usually a little bit. I don't know if prepared is the right word, but I want to say a little bit more prepared um, than, than others at times, but it's, it still makes it, there's still fodder there for us to, 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 you know, get upset about that's for sure. Well, and you know, Lori Kelly, she's a great friend of mine and, and tremendous volleyball coach. And 
I thought I, I like to think I taught her everything she knows, but probably of course. not. But, yeah. uh, you know, and, and she told me years and years ago that she says, we have to go to California and play. We yep. have to go to the Midwest and play. Yep. Or we're not, we'll never get into the national tournament. You know, mm -hmm. and it's very true. I think we talked yep. about that. Uh, you know, you got to get that exposure. You know, you got to go play those tough teams. And and I'm sorry, those teams aren't going to come to Montana and play us. No. It's well, just and, not going to happen. Yeah. And, and I feel like the, the volleyball coaches have really kind of um, kind of blazed the path on that. I think they, they were out doing it long before anybody else was uh, as far as basketball or anything else because they knew the importance of those tournaments, not only, you know, like say getting on the road, playing good competition, but getting in front of additional Raiders. Um, I, I think that has been a huge benefit uh, to the conference. And, and I think you're even seeing the benefit it's having on other sports. I think we, you know, we're seeing those yeah. tournaments, the Arizona tournament uh, has been so successful through the years. Uh, and I think it gets us more exposure. It gets us in front of different teams and different Raiders. Um, and, you know, maybe, yeah, I mean, I, I think we discount some conferences just because we, we love our own. But I think there's other conferences that go, you know, well, what kind of basketball can be played in Montana when, you know, I mean, look at all these great schools we have in California or look at all these great schools we have in Florida. How how would a Montana school be any better than us? Um, I, I think those doors are being broken down, even in other sports where volleyball was the first to really get out there and and put themselves in front of other schools. Yeah. Just one more thing on volleyball real quick. Uh, the number right. one team in the nation, uh, Eastern Oregon, you know, uh, Still. And number number two is Jamestown. So a uh, couple of uh, schools that we're kind of familiar with. Uh, a little bit. A little bit. And, and actually, one yeah, and I was saying, I, I'm pretty sure I'd be hard pressed to believe that one of those two schools hasn't played everybody in the frontier. You know, I know I know Tech has seen Jamestown. I, I don't believe they have seen Eastern yeah. Oregon this year. I could be wrong. Uh, but you know that those two programs probably have played uh, between them everybody in the conference. Yeah, I I don't know, but I'll agree with you anyway. How's that? I, I, I think odds are pretty good. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a fact, but again, you know, just that idea that you know our our, our coaches are out there getting into these tournaments, yeah. and and you know those 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 two teams are certainly doing the same darn thing. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, Paul. You're gonna skip Bobby, out on me next week. I am. I have. I have a more pressing engagement. You're not gonna go watch LSU or something, are you? No, I'm not. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think I could bring myself to go cheer for an LSU team with Brian Kelly at the helm. So I'll. Uh, I'll wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I had to bring that up, didn't I? <laughs> you did. You did. And they're starting you know, to win got... some games, and it's making me really uncomfortable. I got people offering me money to come back to a Nebraska game because they did win when I was there. Because <laughs> yeah, they actually won a game. <laughs> yeah, they said the, they said we'll get you free room and board. <laughs> well, because no, there's no hotel rooms taken. That's why. That's right. Yeah, but uh, I said I don't care about the room and board. I'll cover that. I just don't like that 13 hour drive. How about a private jet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought no. you were looking for beer covered. Beer covered. No, 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 no. Don't need right. that. <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do, Paul, is I'm gonna kind of start. Uh, I think we ought to start talking to some ads. Uh, okay. Kinda, so maybe I'll line up an ad next week, and we'll just do an ad a week, uh, kind of between seasons. Here's we get uh, in the law between. Uh, uh, Fall sports and winter sports will have a little bit of time, and I think it's a good good chance and a good time to bring some of those ads in and uh, kind of see where they're going with their individual programs and uh, what's on the horizon for them. I like it. Yep, I think that's a great great idea, and like I say, certainly get their take on uh, adding Arizona Christian and then possibly others or where the conference looks here over the next few. All right, all right, well, man. That, why don't you wrap us up? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. The Montana Sportscast Podcast. Bob Ritter, Rod Paul Panisco, uh, thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care.